Hello everyone, my webcam just broke. I'll be trying to record on my phone for now. Um, I just woke up. It's like 4 a.m. right now and I just wanted to make um, a video discussing about brushes and like layering, stuff like that. So I wanted to discuss frequencies or like noise, noise patterns. So when you go and like say look at a 3D program like Blender, a texturing program like say Substance Designer, you're gonna realize that those programs use a lot of noise to drive textures and like uh, organic shapes. So um, there's two types of noise or like there's a spectrum. There's low frequency. Yeah. And high frequency. When I talk about low frequency, it usually looks like this. So let's take a soft brush and like make it pure white. Then use black. Um, kind of like this. Yeah. So that's like low frequency noise. Meaning like there's large shapes and large spaces in between. Right. Um, when you think about it in like in terms of like a wave. That's how, you know, it usually looks. Um, the wave looks like this. So it's like a really large wave with um, long spaces, long peaks and valleys in between. So these are peaks and these are valleys. With high frequency, um, it's going to look like this. So let's use a brush. Say, for example, this one. It's going to be high frequency noise. right? Or I can use, you know, soft brush again. But instead of using a large size i can just um make my brush smaller so that's high frequency noise meaning um when you look at that when you look at its like waveform it's gonna look like this it's gonna look like that right so painting actually is just the balance between these frequencies we find it visually appealing and um to know how to balance these two things, um, most of the visually appealing stuff um, we find is from nature. So for example, let's look at a tree bark or a tree trunk. So let's make a tree trunk. Um, it's going to be composed of large shapes and small shapes. So for example, I'm going to paint it like this. Then I'm going to add um, high frequency noise to add more grit and detail. Then let's just tidy things up with this. And there we have uh, a tree trunk. So we use like multiple layers and like multiple sizes of like frequencies and shapes to make that like a really appealing or like organic looking um, tree trunk. That's the part that I, I don't think people know a lot about when painting and like using um, brush strokes and like brush work. It, etc it's like balancing these two things like they either use one brush and like paint it all the way with only using one brush um you would make a better painting if you used a variety of brushes um textures and patterns and like noise frequencies now let's get to the second part which is um layering in like traditional painting um looking at the canvas or like an artist's canvas you can definitely see like the stages it went through before um it got to its like final version and like seeing those kind of um layers is part of the appeal in you know great brushwork in painting that's why in lots of digital um paintings we copy that same vibe or look what we usually don't want is just a very one-dimensional method with only one brush stroke with only one pattern with only one texture we want like a variety of these what i mean by that is let's take for example uh, a rooftop and it has um ridges it's corrugated metal but anyway we want this type of texture there's lots of ways one can navigate through this and achieve basically the same appealing result. So for one, I'll try to restrain myself with using only this round hard brush, right? 
Um, but you know, this isn't necessarily appealing, even though I made it using a round brush. Um, so let's make it slightly more appealing by applying the techniques of frequencies and variety of textures in you know what I just discussed. So I'm layering the first, basically the first um the wash. Now I'm gonna maybe layer in some value variation. Some bright some parts are like brighter, uh some parts are darker. And you can see I'm I'm already like trying to mix, you know, this is a large shape, this is a large shape, this is a large shape. So those are low frequency stuff. Uh, I'm generally thinking about low frequency uh at the start of a painting, but say I'm I'm okay with this setup. I'm now gonna move on to um higher and higher frequency details to drive the point home that this is corrugated metal. This is like metal that maybe it's rusty, maybe it's you know something else. So um still using the run brush, I'm gonna make this smaller like outline some specific that rhythm of lines and you can see i'm not you know outlining every single thing that's part of the painting process you simplify the texture in an appealing way so if i were to copy say a photograph if i want to do it artistically i don't copy the entire thing the you know of course corrugated metal is like this right so Maybe there's shadow here and there's like um, highlights here. And that's not what I want to do necessarily. I, I want to imply that kind of texture, but you know, still thinking about, you know, shape design, let's make it like one pixel. Using this, I can really get that like vibe of aging and weathering. Now I'm adding the high frequency one, kind of like areas of rest and areas of interest. Lights. Let's try and work back. Oh, try and work back. Um, those low frequency areas again. Just gonna erase this with the lasso tool. And there we go. So I've made corrugated metal. Actually, it's not that obvious. So I actually need to make it more obvious that this is corrugated metal. I think that's that's good enough. Yeah. And that's all just using round brush. Um, which is kind of like the the hard version. Now I'm going to use, you know, more easier and simpler uh, methods to basically get to the same point. Now I'm going to use a variety of brushes. Maybe let's start with this one, which has like a really interesting texture already. And that's the thing, right? Uh, some of these brush textures basically get you 80% there. And, you know, you just need to know how those brushes work and like if it's the right tool for the right job. This one um, is the right tool for the right job, but I still want um, those low frequency areas. So I'm gonna rough it up a bit. This I'm using like um, a really, what do you call that? Like I'm using a really detailed brush, but I'm using it, you know, as a large sweeping brush so that I get those tiny shapes that it creates, like these shapes. And those imperfections use something like this that use this one which is like a really great tool for the job let's just lasso it i don't have to erase it again i'm using blend modes right now so um so it reacts differently to the texture that i already have maybe i'll go over that in another video um let me know down in the comments if you want something like that but right now i'm just using hard light to basically extract that kind of texture so for example you can see if i press a little bit lightly you can see that it's doing this you know it's implying that corrugated metal texture but if i use it normally um it's way too strong and removes most of the texture work that i've already done beforehand which i don't want because you know i already like how it looks right now i just want to um accentuate that you know, corrugated metal texture and i'm using that through um blend modes and i can make it darker again there let's make i think that that that's that's about it you know this is pretty much the same it has a very different vibe compared to this one 
because you know it's more chalky it def- definitely has more traditional vibe because you know the brushes that i'm using has that traditional textures built into that brush so i'm gonna do the same thing um but let's maybe use different textures this time maybe more digital so for example i'm gonna do it again the round brush round brush is very very versatile so um i recommend you still like um use it fairly often in your workflow and you know um whatever floats your boat i just like using it um right now i'm I'm in paint so all of the brushes that i've been using are default brushes so let's go to something more digital i think that's about it yeah maybe this one so this one has a very digital feel by controlling the size of this like uh wait where is that the brush tip the brush tip size by controlling this um you get to like determine if it's for low frequency stuff or high frequency stuff and i'm gonna use maybe something like this and use a soft brush i'm using blend modes again so i don't destroy the texture that i've been you know creating and maybe this one would work well really no works a little bit that's the thing right like um for, for most of my paintings i don't really memorize all the brushes that i've been using i just you know test if this texture work well with what i'm trying to achieve for example this one has it's kind of like outlining the stroke instead of creating the stroke as is and that that could be useful for some applications but uh maybe not for this one right now i'm actually kind of enjoying it because um it creates this wonderful outline which applies this like corrugated ness of the texture i can also use um smudge tools so for example this one and this has like a very digital feel to it and uh, depending on the smudge tool i guess but yeah you can smudge things around like maybe you can use this to accentuate some of the tex- some of the textures or um kind of pull back some of those textures for example um i have this kind of brush just mm, make brush there we go so this one blends it all the way to oblivion so i lose all that texture but maybe that's useful for areas that i don't want high frequency noise for example this one really knowing what tools you have and like knowing what your goal is and what steps you need to take to get there is really really important as you know one of the lifelong skills that you need to hone as an artist and i think um some brushes have different properties depending on how you actually use their stroke for example this one has this kind of shape right so if i press really hard i get um, this shape and really interesting textures like wavy fib- fibers things like that but if i press lightly um i get more of that um, fiber texture if i press hard but only a few times it creates this wonderful texture of like big and small shapes so there's like more dimensions to a brush than just you know using it the normal way and i think i'll leave it at that i actually like this one the most i like how this turned out um but st- this one still has like potential even though i don't you know particularly like it this one has the most chalky texture i hope um this helps on you understanding how to use layering and like shape design and textures in your work if you've watched this far make sure to leave a like and if you want to see more videos like this one make sure to subscribe i'll see you next time bye bye if you want to learn how to add details using photo bashing and photo textures you can watch this video that i made